Hi everybody, welcome to a special episode where I'll be voting in the US election from Portugal and obviously doing it absentee. And since I'm registered in Alaska, that is where I'll be voting. I was originally planning on a trip there to sell some stuff and early voting, but that all fell through. So, so I wasn't really confident in having time having a paper ballot mailed. So Alaska has an option by email, which is super convenient. Essentially, after they approve your absentee request, they send you a link and a code and fill out your ballot. And then it gives you a PDF that you print out and mail back. And what's special about Alaska voting is that it's ranked choice, which I think Maine is the only other state that does that. So if you're interested in seeing how ranked choice works or just the U.S. voting process, then welcome aboard. So to start out, um, normally you would get mailed an election guide. But since I'm not in Alaska, I just typed it in to search and went down to the state election website. But the guide lists all the candidates and uh, and for Alaska, it's ranked choice, which means you actually get to rank the different candidates. So ranked choice might seem a little confusing at first, but the easiest way to think about it is a candidate has to have over 50% to win, so you're just doing all your runoff elections at once instead of over several weeks or months. So what happens is you rank your candidates, and you can do one or all or however many. The first round of counting, if your first choice gets the lowest amount of votes, then, then they get eliminated and it goes to your second choice for the second round of counting and so on and so forth until one of the candidates gets over 50%. And if one of the candidates gets over 50% the first round, then the other ones don't matter. And here it is written out if that explanation wasn't helpful. And what's really great about the ranked choice is it takes the power away from the parties and gives it more to the people, particularly for the primaries, because it gives a list of all the candidates that qualified to be on the ballot and you pick one and then the top four of all the votes are who goes to the general ele election not just who the party picks and you're kind of stuck with that choice which is especially nice in alaska because 65 percent of voters are unaffiliated with a party at least those were the numbers for the 2020 election i didn't look it up this year but it's i think it's always been around 65 percent so you can go through all the information um, and it gives you all the candidates, little statement from them. And as you can see, there's way more than just two running. And in the U.S., all 400, however many representatives are up for election every two years. So there's always that, and it's based on population, which Alaska only has one, and we have four choices. So since Alaska is the second least populous state after Wyoming, it only has one representative, so the whole state's one district, so everybody votes on it. But normally your part of the state would vote for your representative, and then the whole state votes for the two senators. Which in the U.S., there's a hundred... And so every two years, a third of the senators are up for election. And the representatives are two-year terms, and the senators are six-year terms. And every state has two senators, and then a different number of representatives based on the population. Which I think it works out to one representative per, like, 700,000 people. Which is pretty much the population of Alaska. So I'll just skip down to my district, which is eight. Um... So here's a sample ballot. You can see all the presidential candidates. And so since there's more than four of them, um, you get more than four choices. And then four, actually five choices for U.S. representative because you always get a write-in option. Three options for state senator and just two options for, for state representative. This year's ballot is pretty simple, just one little page. I was scrolling down, and there is a ballot measure, uh, increasing minimum wage, so I'll read about that.
that gives you all the, the information about it. Um, I think they usually have like a pro argument and a con argument. But I'll have to read through all that. Oh, and there's a second one. Uh, the political parties don't like the ranked choice, so they're trying to get it back to how it used to be. And then you also vote on retaining judges or not. That gives you all the stuff and the statistics. So pretty standard. Most states are similar apart from the ranked choice. In some states, judges are appointed and some they're elected. But for the most part, it's a pretty standard ballot. And so for the email voting, um, they sent this link. And then I'll enter the access code in my birth year. So here it is once I've signed in. And I did have to do a declaration saying I was overseas so I think the um, email option is only if you're overseas or in remote Alaska and then you see it says for president it's different because they're actual nominees and these are all the choices which is the same for any state you there's you get all the different parties but the difference here is you can vote for a third party as your first choice and then one of the two main parties is like a second choice or a third choice or not at all. There can be a bit of strategy to your ranking if you, depending on how many rounds you think until one of the candidates gets 50%. Although there's usually always a write-in option for president. So that's interesting that there's not that option now. So I won't show who I'm actually voting for because I think that's illegal for some reason. But it is interesting there's no write-in, because that is how I've voted the last several elections. Okay, so you can undo your vote, so I can demonstrate it, because the online is different than how... The, the sample ballot is how it looks like if you're voting in person. But this, you can be like... One, two, three, four, five, six. And... You don't have to vote for all of them, but just for demonstration. And then just undo all that. Oops. Oh. All right, so back at the beginning, and I'll do my voting for real. So then it's US representative, which does have write-in. So I think all the others do have write-in. Just for some reason this year, the president doesn't. So it turns out Seward is actually in District 5 instead of 8, so which isn't in the voter guide. I guess I'll have to look them up online. Alright, I will say it's very good I looked them up. An option I do often, if there's no options that I like, I just type in my own name. Vote for myself. That was just an example. I actually did like one of them, and one was a little crazy. Um... So I voted myself for second choice. But I've definitely done that in previous elections where it's just like, I would be better than any of these people. So I just started writing in myself. Because um, before I feel like I would do like like TV characters or something that like people usually do. And then there's the minimum wage and paid sick leave, which if you're European, you're probably shocked. And then the getting rid of ranked choice, which to me is just crazy. And so I was wrong about the judges. Um, they are appointed by the governor, but then they periodically, you get to vote if they get to stay on as judges or get replaced. So I kind of skip over this, but it is interesting. So the judges, it has like their personal statement and info and stuff. And then their review from the judicial council and a rating from like attorneys, jurors and court people. And they're all really high. So it must be a good system that Alaska has. So then after all that, you can review, make changes if you need to. So after reviewing the ballot, I just do that. 
and then I have to download all this stuff and print it off. So as simple as that, I just have to go to a print shop to print it out, but I'll see how much it costs to mail it, and if it's expensive, I can drop it off at the embassy. So I got it all printed, and just have to mail it. it has to be international air mail, so that's why I think it'll probably be expensive, or I can just take it to the embassy for free. So I got the ballot all printed and witness signed, um, and got an envelope from the post office. It's actually pretty cheap. Um, normal air mail is like two something euros and priority is five, which is a lot cheaper than a trip to Lisbon. Instead of print this on an envelope, I don't know how you do that. Um, so I'll just have to like cut it out and glue it onto this one, I guess. So I'll just slip it in here so the size is right. Because it sticks out a little bit. And I can and then just cut around, I guess. It'll cut out the postage page part, but since I'm not sending it to the embassy, it doesn't matter. So I think I will write all this information on here just in case this falls off. So all I have is wood glue, so I'll just use a little bit of that and spread it around. And now just press it on. And now just seal it up and we're ready to go. Now ready to go. Alright, so got it all mailed. So that's that. Got my tracking code. And it was 580. So that's it. Um, the letter is still en route. Um, it should make it there by election day. But in Alaska, it just has to have the postmark before election day. So it's good whenever it arrives. So sorry, it was kind of anticlimactic. I was definitely expecting a trip to the embassy. And in Alaska, they do all the counting. I think it's like two weeks after the election when they certify. And they live stream it on YouTube. It's actually kind of boring. There's not much to it, but it does exist um, if you are interested to watch it. And the whole thing is really fast. It only takes like a minute or two to go through all the different results. And so if you are still watching and you're American, please do vote, especially if you don't like either of the candidates, because then it's more important to be that other category. And in all the states, there's more than just those two. And if people keep voting for those two, even though nobody likes either of them, then there's no incentive to change from that system. And the good news is, if you live in the 45 or so states that aren't a swing state, then your vote essentially doesn't matter, so voting third party isn't throwing away anything. If you do live in a swing state, then you do need to think a little bit more. And it's fine to be undecided. I actually ended up changing my vote last minute when I did the ballot review. But Alaska is not a swing state, so it doesn't matter. Although it does sound like it might be closer than normal, so I did change it. And of course, there's all the other stuff besides president that actually affects you a lot more on a local level that is more important and your vote has more of a say. And also there's the National Popular Vote Compact, which is just a compact between a bunch of different states to automatically give their electoral votes to the winner of the National Popular Vote. I don't think it's up for voting in any states, but I think that's a state legislature situation. But you can vote for legislators that support that and encourage your legislators to support that. You can look it up and see which states are already part of it and which ones have it on the docket for the legislators to vote on. Right now it's at 209 electoral votes. Once it gets to 270, it'll go into effect and essentially end the electoral college. 
and the US voting system can make slightly more sense. And then everyone's vote will matter instead of just the people in a handful of states. And the ranked choice voting in Alaska was a ballot initiative. So if you're very politically minded, you could get the petitions and stuff done for your state. And that will open up the field to actually having candidates that people want to vote for and break the duopoly of the two parties and get legislators that actually care about their constituents instead of the party. And then maybe the U.S. can work on having a month-long election season like the rest of the world instead of a year and a half or however ridiculous it is. And just remember that there's more than two people running for president. And if you don't like either of them, you shouldn't vote for either of them. You can always just write yourself in. But if you actually look through the other candidates, you'll probably find somebody that you agree with. And the more people that are in that other slice of the pie is the best way to show your dissatisfaction instead of not voting, which doesn't do anything. If anything, it legitimizes the winner more because it gives them a higher percentage, even though it's most likely not going to be 50%. But anyway, that's just my two cents. I was planning on making this like a bonus video in the middle of the week, but the bathtub was a real struggle to get out. But I finally did get it out, and I just didn't get around to editing it in time, so now it's the Sunday video. But I'll have the rest of the bathroom tear down next time. Ciao.